We are very pleased to welcome you here at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy today. And thank you for taking the time to come here. And we, will, we have prepared some questions to ask for you. You have traveled extensively to some, of the, some very diverse places, including Germany, Los Angeles, and South Africa. How do, you think this, how do you think your travel has impacted you and your personal views on controlled diplomacy? Um, I think f for me, the, I didn't just travel. I lived in a number of countries for many years, actually. And actually, it changed my culture to do that. In every country I lived in, I found myself adapting to what was happening in that country and being influenced by what was happening. So that I got a completely different view of myself and where I come from as a result. And I sometimes feel when I go back home to South Africa that yeah, people, people there are actually missing that opportunity to actually reflect upon themselves uh, through knowing something else. And I think that's the big advantage maybe of cultural diplomacy that it, by getting to know how people think and do things on other parts, well, you can avoid conflict in the first place and in the second place you start to see where you're from in, in a completely different perspective. And which of the places that you've um, lived in do you think has impacted you the most? Mm. I think they all impacted me in different ways because at different stages of my life um, certain things were kind of more important to me and so I would say that living in Zimbabwe was a very important uh, thing for me because I'd come out of South Africa actually I had to leave South Africa at that time and basically South Africa was a kind of a fascist state and it was the first time I had the experience of living in a place that was not fascistic and, and it, it had a huge impact on me and England had a huge impact on me because it was the former colonial power and because I experienced the height of Thatcherism and, and my disappointment in Europe because I'd had a completely different idea of how things work there. Um, I kind of believed the, the, the European press about what they, how they present themselves and I was quite disappointed. And Germany was kind of very interesting because of the social developments that I came across when, when I first came to Germany in the 80s. Um, and the whole East-West confrontation because I was living in Berlin and uh, America was very interesting because it was the first time, strangely enough, that I, I was in a place where people looked at what you could do and valued that. And in spite of everything, that all the faults America has, I found that very interesting, that people that is really interesting. Were, were prepared to actually look at what somebody can do and I was completely funded by the American university system because they thought I had something to offer and I mean nobody in I was the only student at the university in the music program that had a good scholarship and, and all the Americans were paying and if you did that in Germany people would go nuts so it was quite impressive. Do you feel like people benefit more if you move abroad because I know certain people feel like they use their links in I didn't catch the... Um, do you feel like people benefit more when they move abroad? Because I feel like certain people feel like they lose that link or that relation to the country that they were living before they perhaps moved abroad. Kind of lose their home. Yeah. Um, I don't, for me, it, I can't, it's hard to answer that question because my move wasn't voluntary and I wanted to go back and I couldn't. And actually by the time I could go back, I got a life basically, so I ended up not going back for that reason. But if I had had the opportunity, I would have gone back. And I think it's actually good to travel. So I think it's the enrichment that you have through traveling is more important than anything else. And it's a personal decision if people would decide to stay somewhere. 
that's fine, but if somebody feels they've had enough and want to go home, then all the better. And I think, I mean, I noticed working in Africa, the people that have had an opportunity to see things quite often kind of people who are more interesting to work with. In, in that. So I think travel does help. Um, Africa has so much talent and an assortment of music to offer, but has no way of being discovered. How do you think the most efficient way to share and promote this talent to the rest of the world? Not only promoting music, but the culture of that given thing. I, I think that's the wrong approach to, to it. I think Africa has to discover itself, first and foremost. We spend all our time trying to sell something to Europe or America, and actually what people need to do is create a market for African music in Africa, and an audience that's interested in listening to music and prepared to pay for concerts, and prepared to buy CDs instead of copying them off. You know, I was in Zimbabwe recently and I, I, ha I was forced to download MP3s from, from this huge center in Harare because there are no music shops. There was no possibility to buy any Zimbabwean music anyway. And I needed music because I wanted to do some trans transcription for our program and I couldn't. And so I think if you create an internal market, the rest happens by itself. And, and you stop this dependency on the rest of the world. And that's, I think, I think that's the direction to go. That's how, I think that's how the East Africans are trying to do it now. They, they started this thing called the East African Performing Arts Market, which focus, it meets every year in May, and they focus on creating an internal market, and they're more interested in doing that than in actually looking at the rest of the world. And, and I think the music industry is in a crisis anyway, everywhere in the world. The internet has virtually killed the music industry. It's, been the worst thing. It was like the Black Plague or something. I don't know. And the music industry still hasn't found a way to deal with it. And I think, I think I don't really know what the future is in that sense. So I would just say start local and. Like and just our responsibility to make it possible. Yes, I think. Yeah. yeah, I think. I think if there's a festival circuit running, if there's clubs for people to play in, if there's if there's a living to be earned for musicians, you will get good musicians coming up, and then those good musicians will conquer the world stage without a problem. I mean, the problem is that many musicians in, in, in many parts of Africa lack essential skills, and, and when, they, when they get exported, they tend to export a, uh, a particular stereotype of what Africa is, and, and I don't really agree with that personally. I mean, it's okay for people to play out of tune. It's okay for people to sing out of tune because that's African. You know? Whereas it's not. I mean, it's just it's just a, the situation as it is. It's, it's, it's not all, in all places, and certainly not all musicians. But you quite often hear bands that are really quite below standard, and there's a kind of Europeans have a sort of standard. Okay, that's an African band. Doesn't matter. You know, they, that's how they play in Africa. That kind of thing. I think we need to work on ourselves before we think about the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, music is often connected um, in Africa, but also generally. How do you think that um, this kind of thing is good and really falls within um, African education regarding young people? So I mean, to improve music education in Africa, you need to have people trained as educators, people who understand how to think analytically, who could develop curricula. And so you need a good training program that will train people who can do that. And then the rest of it is not that difficult, I think. It's, I don't think it's that, it's certainly not, it wouldn't be that hard to develop a very interesting program of music education that could work for primary schools, secondary schools as well and that would be very good and I think it would would be very popular in schools I'm sure and it would really help there has to be some political will and uh, I suppose yeah the, probably parents have to be prepared to pay something extra in order to have that because it seems from my experience that 
who's going to pay the teachers is always the problem. But yeah, I don't, I don't see a problem with creating a, a good music education system. I mean, there isn't a good one here. So people always talk about music education in schools, and there's almost nowhere where there's a good music. It's, it's very neglected. It's yes, very neglected it's, it's very yeah. I think parents focus more on like Rather than focusing on like programs that will initiate or develop people's musical capabilities. Mm. I mean, I don't think that I think there's there's a, there's kind of a lot of modern education methods in music that are not being applied, and they could be, and very participative, interactive things. They develop all kinds of skills. They develop lateral thinking. They develop. Um, like I said, the ability to analyze, they develop people's social skills, they develop their motor skills, coordination, things like that, that is quite often a big problem with children. And so there's, and the African music is fantastic for doing that. So there's all kinds of ways to use it. And a lot of it is very participative. So if it was properly designed and properly implemented, it would, you could do an incredible program. That would really, and you would certainly find good people to teach it. So, you know, I think if there's political will and there's a little bit of money around, you know, I don't know. That's what I would say. Well, that pretty much answers the next question. <laughs> so the last question, um, what have you got planned for the future of Global Music Academy? Wow, that's a very big <laughs> one. Um, well, we want to get our accreditation finished here. Uh, in March next year, we're hoping we'll... We'll go through the final hurdle. We're through in Berlin with the accreditation, but there's a new step that, that is, has been put in place two years ago, where we have to go to a place called the, the Wissenschaftsrat in Cologne, and it has to be approved by all the rectors of all the universities in the country. And, and that's quite a difficult hurdle because they see things differently to the city of Berlin, so to get them to reconcile their position is quite hard. Um, and then we'd like to open the academy at the end of next year, I mean the degree part of the program. As far as our program in Africa goes, I want to start working on the second year of the program because we want to de design a two-year program and then start working on, on the offshoots, like a, a, a developing a, a children's program schools program, stuff like that, um, and also just collecting and, and, and turning the different musical cultures that are in these countries into educational materials that, so they can be taught in the schools, that's basically, and it's probably, I don't know, probably I'll be dead before it's over, <laughs> but, but I mean at least 15 years I would say we'll need for that, so, and yeah. But hopefully it will happen more and more inside the countries themselves as the skill levels rise. Yeah, you just need someone to trigger it and then, yes. you know, yeah. start. Yes, I think the will is there. I think the, just, yeah. just the skills transfer has to happen. Yeah, and, absolutely. And then once it's been done, then they'll do it themselves. But, you know, unfortunately, the, the Western music education, is the whole system is not very good in the first place. It's actually... It's not a coherent music education system. It's a very odd mixture of medieval <laughs> and, and kind of 19th century and, and 20th century. And so it's, it's quite hard to use that as a basis. We have, we have to start from scratch and do something completely different. But I think if you give people coherent concept-based based teaching concepts, modern teaching concepts, then things can happen quite Absolutely. fast. You have to adjust it to the times. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here today. And good luck with everything in the future. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And you're always welcome to the Institute. <laughs>